Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzy, who plays the part of Ozzy Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Say, I hate to bring up an unpleasant subject, but tomorrow's the deadline on your income tax. <laughs> well, I always manage to sneak in under the wire, don't I? I don't know why you always let it go until the very last night. Oh, now, how can you say that? You know darn well I've been up working hard the last three nights. How can you stay up that late, Pop? Well, when you have something important to do, you just concentrate real hard. Stay awake. Whenever I get to stay up that late, I always fall asleep. Well, if I know your father, he spent most of his time reading magazines, and he'll be up all night tonight with his income tax. No, <laughs> don't be so sure. I may fool you this time. Oh, you said that last year, and you didn't get to bed until 5 o'clock in the morning. Can I stay up with Pop tonight, Mom? Oh, well, you certainly cannot. Don't be ridiculous, Ricky. I think it'd be fun. No, I'm afraid figuring your income tax hardly comes under the classification of fun. Besides, your father will have enough on his mind without having to worry about you. Yeah, we don't want anything to happen to you guys. <laughs> hey, that's right. We're deductible, huh, Pop? Uh, yes, David. The government allows us $600 a year for each of you boys. That pays for your shoes. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to pay the income tax, boy. You will, someday. The principal of our school says every man should pay an income tax. Well, I think just about every man does nowadays. Yeah, but he ought to pay for his wife, too. Women work hard all day at a thankless job and slave over a hot stove at night. Uh, who says all this? Our principal, Mrs. Benson. <laughs> you had me wondering there for a minute. Mm, gee, look at the time. I better hurry up. Where are you going, David? Over to Bob Swanson's. What are you guys cooking up today? Nothing special. What do you guys usually cook up? Oh, he's got his garage set up like a chemistry lab. Oh, say, I hope you're not concocting anything dangerous. Oh, nothing dangerous. Bob gets some good ideas, though. You ought to meet him, Pop. He's real crazy, man. Yeah, he sure is. Only he's crazy the way it means in the dictionary. <laughs> I've met him, and he seems like a very nice boy. Oh, he is. He's just kind of a practical joker. He's a nice guy, though. Well, there's nothing wrong with practical jokes. In fact, a person with a good sense of humor is a welcome addition to any group. Sure, look at me. What about you? I'm a real joker, boy. Well, I must admit, there are times when you're quite a card. <laughs> you can say that again. What are you laughing at, David? You're from the same deck, you know. <laughs> Somebody help me clear the table. I'll help you, Mom. Oh, will somebody get the telephone? Here, I'll get it, Harriet. I'm expecting a call. Come on, Rick. You can help, too. Big man pushes little people around. <laughs> Hello? Hello there, Oz. Uh, this is Herb Dunkel. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, just a second, Doc. Just want to make sure Harriet was in the other room. Well, I've got all the figures. I'll bring them over to your office. I may be out for a spell this afternoon, so just put them on my desk. I'll get at them as soon as I return. And, and, and remember, don't mention this to anybody, will you? See, I don't want it to get back to Harriet. Oh, you can count on me, Oz, old boy. Mum's the word. <laughs> Mom is the word. So long, Dunk. What about now? Oh, Ricky. You don't want to sneak up on a person like that, son. Well, I was here all the time, Pop. Oh. Well, in the first place, the word wasn't Mom. It was Mum. See, I have a little surprise for your Mum. Uh, <laughs> your Mom. What kind of a surprise? Uh, well, remember now, this is a secret just between you and me. What about Mr. Dunkel? Well, yes, uh, Mr. Dunkel has to know about it, too. You see, he's going to make out my income tax for me this year. That is, I've gathered together all the material and all the information and all the figures and all, but he's going to make out the actual forms and stuff. Well, how come? Well, you see, he's an accountant. He knows all about that kind of thing. How come you're not going to tell Mom about it? Oh, uh, well, I, I, I'm going to tell her later on, but, you see, this is sort of a little practical joke on her. She thinks that I have to stay up late tonight and make out my income tax. I don't get it. Well, it, it's not a big, hilarious routine, but uh, I, I think she'll be 
kind of amused by it. It's a little practical joke, you might say. Oh, stealing my stuff, huh, Pop? Well, sure. I just want to prove you're not the only card in the pack. <laughs> Marvelous. Okay, Pop, but just remember one thing. There's only one joke in every deck. <laughs> oh, marvelous. Come in. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. Here, you can put that box right on the table here. All right. Would you care to check over the list? Oh, no, I'm sure everything's there. All right. Say, I took the liberty of adding an extra pound of coffee. It's my own special blend for income tax eve. I figured it'd come in mighty handy for Mr. Nelson. Keep him awake tonight. Oh, what sort of a blend is it? Well, it's 100% pure caffeine with all the coffee removed. <laughs> That's not a private little joke. Well, I'm afraid it's what Mr. Nelson will need, though. How about you? Have you got your tax returns ready to mail? Oh, goodness no, Mrs. Nelson. That's a laugh. <laughs> I guess all you fellows are just alike. Well, according to my wife, I'm the worst of the bunch. She says I'm the procrastinatingest procrastinator that ever procrastinated. <laughs> Well, Mr. Nelson does the same thing every year. No matter how many times he resolves to get them in early, somehow he always manages to get them in just under the wire. Well, I'll tell you what I did. A couple of nights ago, I got together the tax papers, I sharpened the pencils, got out the scratch pad, cleared off the desk, pulled up my chair, turned on my television set, and it looks like a long night tonight. <laughs> that sounds exactly like our house. Well, actually, all you need is one evening of good concentration, but I just can't seem to concentrate. Well, it would probably help if you turned off the television set. Well, yes, but frankly, I think it would help a little more if I could turn off Mrs. Miller. <laughs> well, not that she isn't a real fine woman, mind you. But it, it, it's just that it's hard to get the work accomplished when she's standing over you. You see, she used to be a school teacher, and every time I look up at her and she looks down at me, I, I get the feeling like I'm a little boy who hasn't finished his homework yet. Uh, not that she isn't a real fine woman, like I say. But I could get the work done a lot easier if she would just kind of get out of the house and, and go to a show tonight or something. Say, Mr. Miller, you've given me an idea. Oh, really? Well, you know, it's no fun for the wives to sit around listening to you fellows moan about making out your income tax. Maybe I could get a gang of the wives tonight and we could go over to the women's club and play cards or something. Say, that's a mighty fine idea. And say, Mrs. Nelson, uh, just in case you should need a fourth, uh, may I suggest Mrs. Miller? Like I say, she's a mighty fine woman. I guess Mr. Dunkle's out to lunch. Yeah, here my returns right here. Ricky, don't mess around with that filing cabinet. Mr. Dunkel's got a lot of personal stuff in there, probably. disturb anything there now. How can I? It's all locked up. Well, he probably knew I was bringing you along. How do you know that? I don't know. Will you please? I still got the paper on it. Well, I know. Put it back in the box and take your feet off the desk. Tax balance, payments, item six. Enter balance. 
care of, boy. the window? Look, why don't you sit over in this chair here? Now, just relax, will you? I'll be through in just a minute. Now, I didn't know Mr. Dunkel had a safe. Yeah? I wonder what they keep in it. Oh, probably valuable papers or bonds. Might even have some money in there. Did you ever see those burglars in the movies? The way they open it? You just turn this little dial and the thing swings right open. See, the sheet is attached to this phone. You think you could open it, Pop? No, I'm afraid opening safes is a little out of my line. Leave it alone now. I was just looking at it. I bet you could if you tried. Well, I'm not going to try. You want me to try? <laughs> no, thanks. That won't be necessary. Oh, come on, son. Hey, Pop. About how old would you say the safe is? Oh, I don't know. It's a pretty old one. Very well built, though. It sure looks heavy. I bet your safe cracker would have to blast this one open. Oh, not necessarily, Ricky. Those guys really know their business. I don't think they have much trouble opening this. Well, how'd they do it? Well, they do it with sandpaper. You wouldn't have taken an awful lot of time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I mean is, see, they sandpaper the tips of their fingers. That makes them very, very sensitive. Then they just turn the dials, and they listen carefully as the tumblers fall in place. Well, what do you mean? Well, look, I'll show you. See, see these little numbers? See, each one has a combination, as you probably know. Now they just move it back. They sandpaper the fingers, of course. And then just turn it and turn it and listen very carefully. I think it'd be more fun to put a stick of dynamite and blow the door open. Oh, no, the cops would be on us in no time. <laughs> better just to turn it gradually, one way and then the other, listening very carefully for the tumblers. You sure know a lot about safe cracking, Pop. Oh, not necessarily. Hey. Did you hear something? Oh, what, Pop? I thought I heard a, a little click then, as if the, the tumblers fell into place. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Didn't you sound like a little click to me? Well, the safe didn't open. Well, I know the, the safe doesn't open until you pull the handle. Hey! <laughs> hey Pop, you did it! How about that? How'd you do it, Pop? Oh, your old man is a guy of many talents. <laughs> find another place to hide my money, boy. Hey, I don't blame you. Boy, I'm a regular Jimmy Valentine. I sure wish I could open a safe like that, boy. <laughs> I just happened to think of a wonderful idea. What's that, Pa? Well, here's a little joke we could play on Mr. Dunkel to really mystify him. See, as long as I've got the safe open now, why don't I put my tax papers in there and then lock it up again and let him figure out how I got it open in the first place? It's a lucky thing you're a good safe cracker. Uh, Ricky, I'm not a safe cracker at all. The safe just accidentally came open. I don't know. You sure look like you knew what you were doing. <laughs> well, believe me, I didn't. <laughs> Boy, old Dunkel's gonna get a kick out of this. I hope so. Oh, sure. People enjoy having little practical jokes played on them, especially if they have a sense of humor. Do you enjoy having little jokes pulled on you? Well, sure I do, if they're really funny. Boy, old Dunkel's really gonna be mystified. Hey, here's Mr. Thornberry's tax return, too. I guess old Thornberry's been playing it smart this year. Why don't you put him in the safe with yours? Yeah, I think I will. That's a good idea. Now I'll leave a little note for Mr. Dunkel. Let's see what would be a funny thing to say. You sure are full of jokes today, Pop. Well, a little practical joke never hurt anybody. If you're looking for <laughs> Barney's tax papers, or mine. They're locked <laughs> in the safe. 
in a safe place. You're safe. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, that's good. Hey, what are you doing down there? Oh, nothing much. Well, come on, let's go, son. Oh, wait a minute. You better make sure the safe is locked. Well, I locked it before, don't you remember? You better try it again. No, don't be so... Dad! <laughs> My dad, your shoelaces together. Wasn't that funny? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You just can't hear me laughing with my head in this wastebasket. <laughs> I think he went someplace with Ricky. Oh. Why, what's the matter? Oh, nothing's the matter. I was just talking to some of the wives a while ago, and we decided that since the men will be working on their income tax reports tonight, that we might have a little get-together down at the women's club. Oh, good. That fits in swell. Why, dear, did you make some plans? Yes, ma'am. Can I spend the night over at Bob Swanson's? Have you been invited? Yes, ma'am. Ricky, too. Well, sure, that's fine. Go ahead. There's going to be five of us. Bob, Ricky, me, Will Thornbury, and Georgie Dunkel. Was there enough room for five of you fellas? Oh, sure. Bob's got a pretty big bed. <laughs> it certainly isn't big enough to sleep five of you. Oh, no. Two of the guys can sleep in the bed, and the other guys can sleep on the floor. We can bring our sleeping bags. You sure this is all right now? Who invited all you fellas? Bob did. Yeah, I thought so. Does Mrs. Swanson know about this? Oh, sure. I asked her, and she said it was swell. Well, if you're sure. Oh, sure. I wouldn't leave it up to Bob. You know him and his jokes, he'd probably wind up sleeping on the front lawn. Well, okay, that'll give your father the house all to himself. Just poor old dad and the income tax papers. Doesn't that stuff have to be in the mail by tomorrow? That's right. It's usually a photo finish, but he always seems to make it. I've got everything all set up for him. Plenty of paper and sharp pencils. I've hidden the magazines, disconnected the radio, and turned the television set to the wall. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. We were just talking about you. Where have you two been? Oh, uh, just around downtown. Around downtown? Well, looks as if it might have been a rough voyage. <laughs> well, uh... Could be. Could be. <laughs> what are you doing downtown? Oh, uh... Nothing much, really. Just a little safe cracking, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little private joke. Don't let it worry you, dear. Tell them about tonight, Mom. Oh, yes, I've got some good news for you. You have the house all to yourself tonight. Oh, how come? The boys have been invited over to Bob Swanson. Since when? Invited us this afternoon. You too, Rick. Are you going out tonight too, Harriet? Well, yes, I thought I'd go over to the women's club and play some bridge, and that'll give you a chance to work on your taxes without any interruption. Well, this may come as quite a shock, but I've finished all my work on my taxes. Oh, you're kidding. No. The Dunkel's going to finish it up for me. Oh, say, that reminds me. He phoned you while you were out, and he wanted you to call him just as soon as you came in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of expecting he'd call. He seemed rather upset about something. I think uh, uh, mystified would be a more appropriate word. Well, I wonder why he wasn't laughing. <laughs> well... <laughs> He'll laugh as soon as he catches on to the joke. What joke? Uh, well, you see, Dunkel has this big old safe in his office. So I was sort of showing Ricky how a, a safe is open. You know, I was just fooling around with the dials a little bit, and all of a sudden the darn thing popped right open. I'm sure would make a good burglar, boy. <laughs> sounds like one already. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was an accident, on it? Where does the joke come in? Well, you see, Thorny had his tax papers over there, too. So after I'd accidentally opened the safe, I thought it'd be kind of funny. I took my tax papers and I took Thorny's, and I put them in the safe, and then I closed the safe and locked it again. And now poor old Dunkel can't figure out how I got it open. <laughs> Do you think that's kind of a funny joke? <laughs> oh, yes. Is that a police car stopping in front of our house? Where? <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. Oh! <laughs> I'm a little worried there for a minute. Say, I better call some of the wives and tell them I can't make it. Oh, no, no. I don't want you to do that. Well, I wouldn't want to leave you home alone. Well, that's okay. I don't want to spoil your fun. You aren't spoiling our fun, dear. I can play bridge any night. 
Uh, where are you going? Oh, just out to get dinner started. Oh. I think I'll go phone old Dunkel and clear up the mystery for him. Oz, have you talked to Dunkel yet? Uh, no, I was just about to phone him. I worked three nights on those tax papers, Oz. Three long, hard nights. <laughs> Don't get excited, Thorny. They're okay. Didn't Dunkel get my note? Yeah, sure he got your note. That's the reason he's so worried. <laughs> he's worried because he can't figure out how I got his safe open. <laughs> he knows how you got it open, Oz. It was never locked. <laughs> it was never locked. That's right, but it is now. Now Dunk was worried about how he's going to get it open. Now, wait a minute. You mean to say the man doesn't even know the combination of his own safe? Ah, uh, the safe was already there when Dunkel moved into the office. It's never been locked because he never uses it. And he never uses it because he doesn't know the combination. You mean to say that my tax papers are locked in that safe and nobody knows the combination? My tax papers are locked in there, too. The neat joke on Mr. Thornberry, huh, Pop? Ricky, please, this is serious. I thought it was a joke. Well, yes, it started out to be, but it's suddenly taken a very dramatic turn. Oz, I want my tax papers. Uh, Thorny, just calm down for a minute. Three nights I worked on them, Oz. Three long, hard nights. I'll never be able to remember some of those deductions. <laughs> yes, I went through the same thing myself. I want my tax papers, Oz. Thorny, please, don't get hysterical. Sure, there must be something can do. Fine. What do you have in mind? Well... I'm waiting. Say they, they, they can't get the safe open. That's right. And they call the safe company and they're closed for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Think this over for a second. You say they... they definitely can't, can't get the safe open. <laughs> Any more bright ideas? Who did the safe belong to? I'm sure they still have the... We don't know. Uh, don't, don't know. No. Don't know. How about the company that manufactured the safe in the first place? They'd have the you company. out of business in 1912. Uh, 1912. Yes. 1912. Papers are locked in the safe. Nobody knows the combination, so therefore can't get the safe open. That's our problem, right? And it's a beaut, too. Well? Uh, Harriet, before you go out, will you put a pot of coffee on? Looks like it's going to be one of those long, long, hard nights. <laughs> Another cup of coffee, Thorny? No, thanks. I already had four cups. Well, we'll probably be finished with this stuff in about an hour or two. Yeah, probably. Well, cheer up. You had nothing better to do tonight anyway. <clears throat> nothing except catch up on my sleep. Oh, you can't kid me. Thorny, you know darn well you'd miss the excitement of this last-minute rush. Besides, everybody else is figuring out his tax return tonight. Ah, oh, please. I'm trying to add up these figures. Oh, hello, Doc. Oh, good evening. Is all home? Yes, he is. Go right in the dining room. Like, oh, no. yeah. uh, come on in, Doc. Go right in there in the dining room. Oh, hi, Doc. Hello there, Thorny. Hello, all. Hi. They don't tell me you managed to lock the safe. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, David called me, though. Uh, David? Yes, it seems a friend of his has a chemistry set. Oh, oh yes, uh, uh, Bob Swanson. Uh, what did David phone about? It seems they've been doing some experimenting, and they uh, volunteered to blow the safe open for me. <laughs> I hope you turned him down. Oh, yes, indeed. But I think I have a solution. It uh, may be rather expensive, though. Well, well, let's hear it. Yeah. Well, the law says your returns have to be in the mails by March 15th. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, my idea is to get your returns in and let the tax department worry about the rest. What do you mean? Simple. We just mail them the safe. <laughs> oh, bully, 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 bully. Bully, 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 bully.